Hi, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel, My Intuition. I'm continuing my class series on biology of uh, biology for engineers. This is module two. I consider as chapter two because I wrote a textbook on that. So this is my textbook. I'm showing here as the study material here. So chapter two or the module two of uh, 21 PE 45 Biology for Engineer that is human organ system and bio design. So, one okay it's two part is there that is uh, module three actually so here the first point i'm explaining in this class video that is uh, brain and cpu system uh, we know human brain it can uh, it is far better than uh, a computer system cpu system we will be comparing of some of the terms uh, or uh, we'll see what how uh, the brain uh, the potential can be used uh, in a normal uh, computing system how it possibly it can be connected okay so both brain and uh, cpu they receive the process input uh, they store information uh, perform calculation to produce output however there are significant differences between these two uh, as they store and uh, process information and the fact that human brain has the ability to uh, learn and adapt uh, while a computer uh, or the CPU, it does not have that uh, potential right now, even though we say that artificial intelligence is there, everything is there, but it, uh, everything is still now working on the uh, data which is available in the system, not they are not doing their own uh, work. Okay, so some comparison I given in this uh, uh, table uh, as a comparison chart uh, based on the construction, based on the memory growth. Uh, based on the backup system, uh, based on the memory power, uh, just a comparison is given there. Uh, as you know about uh, computer very well, uh, uh, what are the things, uh, how it is constructed, uh, what is the memory growth, uh, uh, what is the backup system, what is the memory power, and you can compare uh, with that of a brain, uh, how exact uh, that difference you can see here. The memory density, memory density itself says that 10 to the power 7 circuits per uh, cubic centimeter, but for us computer, it says around 10 to 4, 10 to the power 14 bits only uh, for a cubic centimeter. The energy consumption, uh, information storage, then uh, size and weight, uh, transmission of information, uh, information process power, uh, input output equipment. Uh, structural organization, parallelism, uh, reliability and uh, uh, damageability properties, all these are compared in this uh, particular table, you can just go through it. Okay, so architecture of uh, comparing that of uh, uh, CPU as well as uh, our uh, brain, uh, it is, uh, it can be compared or uh, it, 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 the comparison is given with that of uh, one human's architecture of uh, a traditional computer and uh, that of uh, uh, brain computing system it is uh, schematically represented here i took it from the uh, reference uh, it's very good and uh, able to understand what it is so i i, I took i have to take from that uh, reference only through from the research data i got about it this particular image okay so cpu uh, and uh, the computing cell the memory are uh, in the uh, computing system as well as in our brain system it is represented here so that now we'll get an appropriate idea a proper idea about uh, how this works so in human brain information is processed in a distributed manner across multiple regions as you can see uh, multiple regions uh, the, the process is up information is processed each with a specialized function rather than being processed sequentially in a single centralized location. Uh, just like how a computer a CPU has an uh, arithmetic logic unit uh, ALU to perform the uh, mathematical calculation, human brain has specialized regions for processing mathematical and logical operations. Uh, the prefrontal contact, uh, cortex, for example, it is responsible for the higher level cognitive functions. Uh, uh, such as decision making, problem solving, they are all there in the prefrontal cortex. So that is somewhat here on this. Thing. Okay, so the image it is already there. Okay, so the schematic representation of frontal lobes of brain it is given. The prefrontal cortex, uh, this location where the uh, the uh, numerous the calculation everything is uh, happening in that particular region of our brain. 
Similarly, a computer CPU also has a memory unit for storing information and the human brain has several regions dedicated to mem uh, memory storage including the hippocampus, hippocampus and uh, uh, amygdala. Okay, all these terms uh, you studied earlier. Uh, now again, uh, recollecting it uh, while pronouncing it, uh, doing the mistakes. Okay, this is, this is hippocampus and uh, amygdala. Okay, you can pronounce as per uh, the standard pronunciation that one. So it is represented here. So this is the hypothalamus uh, region, uh, and uh, uh, because hypothalamus I studied earlier uh, in detail. Uh, so hippocampus suddenly when the word comes uh, got confused. Okay, so that the same region and uh, the amygdala is also represented here, uh, where that exactly that location comes to where the memory unit, the storing information, which is uh, in our brain, okay, inside, inside our brain, I cannot open and show. Okay, so the limbic system, the cross section of the human brain, and this also I took from the uh, credit is I have to give because I took it from shuttle of the uh, shuttle stock uh, image system. Uh, very good image representing uh, the structure uh, uh, while a comparison between the human brain and computer uh, cpu it can provide useful insight it is very important to note that uh, the human brain is vastly more complex and capable system with many functions that are still not fully understood so we'll go in somewhat details uh, like uh, what is there in the brain uh, and how we can connect it to the computer system what possibly we can connect uh, so, if a young generation like you people uh, get this type of ideas, proper ideas, then uh, a comparison, uh, then you can think about uh, imitating uh, the brain, we call it as biomimicking, uh, and uh, you can produce a better computer. So, the central nervous system, CNS and peripheral nervous system, PNS, are the uh, two main components of the nervous system in human body, which is represented here, the two main uh, uh, nervous systems uh, as a central nervous system as well as uh, peripheral uh, nervous system okay so the central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord the brain as well as the spinal cord that is the central nervous system uh, and this is responsible for the receiving processing and uh, integrating the sensory information and transmitting commands to the rest of the body the brain acts as the command center receiving and processing sensory inputs and uh, generating uh, the motor outputs while the spinal cord act as the relay center transmitting information between brain and peripheral nerves. The peripheral nervous system on the other hand uh, can consist of all the nerves that lies outside the brain and spinal cord. It is responsible for transmitting sensory information from the peri periphery of the body such as the skin, muscle and organ to central nervous system and transmitting commands from uh, CNS to the periphery. Uh, it can be further, it is further divided into somatic uh, nervous system and uh, autonomic uh, nervous system. Autonomic is uh, something which you work by its own without a uh, need of uh, proper uh, control. Uh, it will do its work, it will do its work when it is needed. Okay, so that is the way to re uh, remember the function of that uh, nervous system. Somatic nervous system which is represented here. You can see our brain uh, has got uh, neurons, the representation of neurons we already studied in, uh, earlier, many of us. It has got a cell body, neuron, myelin, axon, everything, brain. Okay, so the somatic nervous system, how does it work? This is represented here. Uh, movement uh, control, uh, sensory input, uh, it is based on how uh, the uh, brain gives the order and uh, that nervous system do the work according to the instruction given by the body uh, but as, uh, so the somatic uh, nervous system controls uh, the voluntary movements while the autonomic nervous system controls involuntary functions such as heart rate uh, digestion uh, respiration uh, okay so brain will not always not telling a heart total uh, that you beat uh, increase the uh, see heart rate uh, that is uh, somewhat which is auto or uh, automatically it is happening uh, the heart rate uh, a heartbeat, uh, even the, di the digestion system, uh, respiration of you take air intake, uh, outtake of uh, air. These are all uh, controlled uh, by not by the somatic nervous system. It is comp uh, controlled by the uh, autonomic nervous system. So that is given here. It is also have two different uh, terms further. 
like para sympathetic and uh, sympathetic and uh, different uh, movements functions which is uh, by its own work that is also represented here you can go through it okay so next signal uh, transmission signal transmission in brain occurs through the firing of nerve cells or neurons how the signal it is uh, transmitted from our brain to the different parts of our body or uh, uh, how this movement of the signal or the signal uh, transmission takes place in our body in uh, computer system we all already know so in uh, body system and that's why this particular subject is introduced so that uh, the uh, engineers uh, should know something about the biology if not studied in our earlier uh, classes uh, should have some idea that this is how the uh, system works then uh, can think about connecting it to the computer so this is the representation of a nerve uh, a nerve it is connected interconnected nerves so here this is one of the nerve cells it is further connected to nerve cells uh, continuously so say, say that it is a firing of nerve cells firing of means if any information to be passed the nerve cells through that uh, axon uh, it goes to the myelin uh, then axon terminal uh, axon terminal uh, it will uh, give this uh, uh, neurotransmitters so neurotransmitters will be given uh, uh, which is the um, we call it as a synaptic transmission uh, the transmission of information through the nerve cells we call as a synaptic transmission so this is how the information it is passed from one cell to one nerve cell to the other nerve, uh, second nerve cell only i can show the image i, I don't have the animation uh, animated uh, video to show uh, you can check it in other youtube channels uh, there may be the animated uh, how that works it may be uh, given here that will be very interesting to watch so a neuron receives input from other neurons at its dendrites integrates the information and then generate the electric impulse or action potential that travels down in its axon to the uh, synaptic terminus at the synaptic terminus the neuron release chemical uh, neurotransmitters which across the synaptic gap uh, across the uh, which crosses the synaptic gap and bind to the receptors on the uh, post synaptic neuron leading to the initiation of another action potential in the uh, post synaptic neuron okay so that's about how the uh, transmission uh, happens through our body system okay so different types of uh, neurotransmitters have different effect on our uh, photo synaptic neuron and then in it influences brain function including mood learning and memory okay not much complicated words uh, long term potential uh, synaptic uh, plasticity including long term potential and long term uh, depression which can modify the strength of synaptic connections and contribute to learning and memory process then eeg next topic uh, under uh, the same uh, main topic uh, brain and computers how the connection and uh, what are the things to know about eeg it stands for uh, electroencephalography it's a non invasive method non invasive means we are not uh, cut no cutting no uh, it's on scissor work scissor work, work. Uh, there is no damage as such is why called as non invasive so it is a non invasive method of measuring the electrical activity of brain uh, the eeg records electrical signal generated by brain's neurons as the commute with each other means when the, the neurons uh, fire we call it as neurons firing means the information is going through our body that is always uh, for firing of the neurons that word you have to remember that whenever uh, we do some work means the neurons are actually firing okay so that firing uh, means it's a electrical signal uh, that can be measured uh, and it can be uh, you can analyze it uh, as an eeg reading uh, so that is eeg okay so that is represented here uh, the applications of eeg uh, it is used for a diagnosis of uh, epilepsy epilepsy means uh, called as brain damage or seizure uh, of uh, brain uh, or it's uh, known as seizure disorders it can be used to study the sleep uh, sleep studies uh, uh, sleep patterns uh, and if any sleep disorders are there, can be analyzed by using EEG. 
it can be used as a brain computer interface or bci uh, it can be used for uh, researching the functions of brain it can be used to for the diagnosis of brain disorders uh, like uh, dementia parkinson's disease uh, traumatic brain injury etc it can be used to measure monitor the anesthesia the use of anesthesia whenever I do a major surgery anesthesia required uh, whether the anesthesia is working or not uh, whether the, the patient is coming out from the anesthesia sleep or not uh, that he need to be monitored otherwise a uh, huge sudden pain uh, the patient uh, will uh, panic okay so monitoring the brain activity during pharma uh, uh, some people uh, during an uh, accident or uh, some other cases, uh, disease cases go to coma for a long time. Then uh, we should be able to uh, uh, monitor what activity is going on in their brain. For that also EEG is used. So EEG signals and uh, types of brain activity. Okay, so there are different uh, uh, signals given by our uh, brain uh, means our brain do so many activity even though if, it, if we are sleeping also so many activities are happening in our brain uh, it, then how it is it can be detected not exactly we cannot be able to detect uh, uh, even we cannot uh, det, uh, measure what is going on in our brain uh. okay so some of the waves which the uh, uh, experts use to measure uh, the activity of brain like delta waves uh, uh, associated with uh, deep sleep, uh, infancy, uh, brain disorder, uh, the theta waves uh, associated with uh, the sleep, relaxation, uh, meditation, uh, hypnosis, uh, alpha waves uh, uh, on a uh, uh, relaxed mood, like that it is given. Okay, so these are the ways that we see in the uh, computer monitor uh, of the EEG recording system electronics locally. So that that how it is connected to the brain say deep sleep drowsy relaxed focused like that even the seconds how fast it moves how slow it moves all those are need to be analyzed to to have a rough idea what is going on in our brain okay so robotic arms for prosthetic robotic arm it is a word given but it can be left also Okay, it's a prosthetic, a replacement of our uh, body part, uh, we call it as robotic arm. Okay, so for robotic arm for prosthetics are the advanced prosthetic devices which robot which uses robotic technology to restore functions to individuals with uh, upper limb am amputations. These devices typically use motors, actuators, sensors and mimic the movement of a human arm um, and allowing the wearer to allowing the user to perform tasks such as uh, reaching, grasping, uh, manipulating uh, object uh, or doing the function as normally we do uh, that has to be done by the prosthetic. Okay, so usually the prosthetic it controls a variety of uh, ways like uh, direct control that is myoelectric control or brain machine interface. Okay, uh, so here why too much space. Uh, some prosthetic arms also incorporate machine learning algorithm to improve their performance. So robotic arm prosthetic directly controls through muscle signal that is myoelectric control which is represented here. Okay, I took an image of a leg but we call it as a, a robotic arm. Okay. okay, so here the muscle, muscle uh, movement, we say imagine that this particular part of leg it is not the normal one it is a prosthetic one then muscle it, when the movement happens the muscle knows that muscle information is given to that particular muscle that the next movement how it has to be that will be uh, that can be uh, recorded that can be measured and it can be given to a computer interface and can give a signal to the actuator so the actuator will do the work accordingly that is how i can simplify it this is how the myoelectric control works the muscle movement, the next movement, how it, what, what should be that next movement required, that signal, it is controlled, it is processed and given to the actuators and the actuator uh, will make the movement accordingly. Accordingly, that is myoelectric control. So that means when wearer con uh, contracts their muscle, the electrodes detect the signals 
electrical signal and uh, send them to the control unit uh, which uh, interprets uh, the signal and uh, uses them to control the movement of a robotic arm or robotic leg or any part of that. Depending on the specific design, the control unit may use pattern recognition algorithm to determine which movement uh, the wearer is intended to perform or wearer may use a combination of muscle signal to control specific degree of freedom in the prosthetic arm. It has got some advantages like uh, uh, it is directly controlled by the user uh, allowing for a more uh, intuitive and natural interaction with the prosthetic just like the natural movement uh, the person who was using that he may feel. It also provides high level of control and precision uh, and uh, the electric signal generated by the muscles are unique to each individual and can be used, used to perform a wide range of movements. But it has also got uh, limitations. So the advantage is the limitation and put it into paragraph. Uh, limitations, uh, it, can be, it can be very complex, require extensive rehabilitation and training to use effectively to the person who is in need of that. Uh, may on, uh, ongoing maintenance required, uh, it has to be continuously monitored and maintained. The system may not be suitable for individual with muscle weakness. So if, if a person is uh, an aged person or uh, if a muscle weakness is there, if muscles are not strong, then this will not work. The next one that is with the brain machine interface, BMI. It's a type, it's a type of technology which allows user to control a robotic arm or a prosthetic directly with the brain activity, the brain, what the brain signals that uh, directly it will use like uh, the brain it is connected uh, to the brain uh, signal uh, the signal acquisition it is digitalized then it is processed and the command it is given uh, to the to the uh, prosthetic device okay so this is the prosthetic device this is not a prosthetic device as such the supporting system okay so uh, the prosthetic device the prosthetic uh, it will do the function as per the instruction given by the brain that is a brain machine interface so this is one schematically represent so that you can understand what is that term compared to compared to the myoelectric uh, control system okay so okay we need to read out this Okay. When the user thinks about moving the prosthetic arm, the electrode uh, detects the corresponding brain activity. Means when the brain starts thinking about the required movement, then the that signal is sent to the control unit outside in a CPU in a computer system, uh, which uses algorithm to interrupt the signal and control the movement of prosthetic. User can then control the movement of uh, the prosthetic in real time by thinking about the desired movement. When a user thinks that I need to do that, then the signal will process the and uh, the body part, the prosthetic part, is doing that function. Uh, it has got a advantage of providing direct and uh, intuitive connection between the user's brain and the prosthetic, allowing for higher level of control and precision. Uh, it can be used to provide a sensory feedback to the user, allowing them to experience the sensation of touch through prosthetic however uh, it has got a uh, limitation like uh, it is a complex and invasive system surgical implantation required ongoing maintenance to uh, ensure a proper function required may not be suitable for individual with uh, uh, having some brain uh, uh, deficiency or uh, affecting uh, brain activity uh, whose uh, the signals are not uh, accurate uh, they cannot be used so there are uh, uh, research is going on and that is the reality research is always going on uh, and uh, new new things are coming out uh, which will come to the google will download the material from the google and will read it uh, i request you people to do the research uh, and don't simply read others work do research and uh, give something uh, to your uh, the next generation uh, to to read uh, or as well as to get motivated and to do further research. Okay, engineering solution for Parkinson's disease. Parkinson, it is a neurodegenerative disorder. Uh, first, we'll see what is Parkinson's, so then only it will be better to go. So, this is the uh, representation how the Parkinson's disease, uh, is a typical appearance of Parkinson's disease. Uh, 
that uh, vibration uh, too much vibration hand shaking vibration leg breaking vibration uh, not able to stand properly they have don't have their control over the body and uh, these are the initial stages of uh, parkinson's disease uh, symptoms uh, that uh, st the posture uh, stop uh, stooped posture uh, rigidity and uh, flexed elbows um, forward tilt uh, and uh, and uh, mainly with the swinging shaking or uh, shivering uh, type uh, that is that type of uh, disease that comes we call it as parkinson's disease uh, there are several engineering solutions uh, to improve the quality of life uh, or to treat an individual who is having uh, parkinson's disease which include deep brain stimulation and dbs using electrode to uh, tremor stiffness to control that to get a relief from that exoskeletons are uh, wearable devices which provide support and assistance for individual uh, mobility issues uh, some of the exoskeletons uh, can help to improve the balance reduce the tremors tremors and uh, increase overall mobility then uh, tele rehabilitation it is a telecommunication technology uh, to connect it to the parkinson the person of, uh, having parkinson disease uh, without uh, the need uh, in person to visit their therapist smart watch applications uh, used to monitor the symptoms of parkinson disease such as tremor and provide reminders and uh, prompts for medication and uh, exercises then virtual reality virtual reality system can be used for rehabilitation and therapy for uh, individuals with the parkinson's disease providing interactive and uh, uh, engaging environments for a uh, patient to practice movements and improve uh, coordination and the balance okay so that's about the uh, uh, parking sensor this is artificial brain very interesting topic uh, artificial uh, brain uh, comparison is given here uh, the idea about uh, artificially uh, narrow intelligence and artificial general intelligence artificial narrow intelligence means that normal how that um, our system computer system work uh, it perform the machine is able to perform a single task extremely well even better than humans whereas artificial general intelligence or artificial brain if you want to develop then that machine can be made to think and function as a human mind okay so the idea behind artificial brain is to create a machine that can learn reason and solve problem in the same way that humans do it is very earlier stage this development of agi is in a very earlier stage right now uh, currently the artificial intelligence ai system are designed to perform a specific task such as image recognition speech recognition decision making but they are not capable of generating intelligence even though we use that term intelligence but actually intelligence is not there it is collecting the data in a very good big cloud it is collecting the data and giving the best solution or best remedy just like what we think we suddenly we think everything what is going on to a situation and will give a proper remedy for that immediate remedy for that same way if things are there then the artificial intelligence right now they collect it and analyze it and tell uh, this is the best solution for that that is ai right now intelligence as such it is yet to come okay anyhow name is given uh, it will come so narrow domains lack the ability to learn from new experience generalize from uh, past experience or reason about the world in same way that humans do okay so you can read it out uh, despite the significant change challenges uh, some experts believe that artificial brain are a realistic uh, uh, possibility and uh, they have the potential to uh, uh, revolutionize the ai and bring about new technological advancements other arguments that uh, it just a just a complex not going to come not going to practice, uh, materialize uh, that is other way of okay whatever it may be the research is going on uh, based on that so this is about uh, this first topic of a second chapter or second module that is brain as cpu i think i able to connect you uh, to the uh, computer system as well as brain uh, the important uh, uh, functions and uh, how the uh, development happening and how the things are working uh, 
better idea you might have got from this particular class video hope if you got that uh, then please do subscribe my youtube channel my intuition first you do that then uh, convey message to others of your classmate or uh, others of uh, fourth semester uh, be in uh, Visheshwara Technological University that uh, a particular class series video is going on please do watch it okay so thank you very much for watching my uh, video uh, being with me supporting me always thank you very much